They were out of date. Well, that doesn't mean anything. The only way to tell if eggs are off is to put them in a bowl of cold water and see if they float. But Brenda, have you ever thought that life is just too short to float eggs? That is probably the deepest thing I've ever heard you say, Rodders. Talking of eggs, cafe. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. You coming, Brenda? Oh, yeah, cos going to the cafe is exactly what I want to do with my morning off. Right. Sorry. They were my eggs, Rodney. You had no right. It was my decision and now they're gone. Right. Cafe. Yeah, cafe. I'm getting you in a hurry. Yeah. Surgery should have started ten minutes ago. Oh. Uh, you know, you... Court's on inside out. What? Oh. Right, uh, I didn't really get a lot of sleep last night. My oh. no, back's still bad from playing horse. Oh, that's too much info. Oh, you mean the piggyback race? <laughs> Ooh. OK, now I'm getting the hostility, I think I'll, uh... Come on, then, Leo. Oh, come on. You sure you should be working today? Vanessa is at Williamson's all morning, so I don't really have a lot of choice, do I? So is it my fault? No, I'm not saying that, Paddy. I'm, I'm just saying I've been looking at the books and we can't oh, really oh, afford well, to be turning customers away at the minute. I will be fine once the paracetamol kicks in. At least let me book your doctor's appointment. I'm OK, yeah? Just please stop fussing. <sighs> oh. Right, I'm sorry, Dan. Tea, wasn't it? Two sex. You do know we've got a kettle at the garage? Yeah, but no one makes a brew like our Bob, do they? Mm, right. Make it a takeout. Oh, in a rush. Would it be possible for you to give us a hand? It's just I've got the forecourt to sort out and a service to do before lunch. No chance. I'm optimising it as well. I've been up since six doing paperwork. Before you ask, Dom's out on a job. Uh, double espresso, please, Bob. Right, coming up. All right, but maybe it's you who needs to take it easy, because seriously, you're looking knackered. Oh, thanks, Dad. Can't you save your little pep talk for Chaz? Hey, just remember we've got a garage to run. So keep the customers waiting, we're going to lose them. Right, here we go. One coffee and one tea. Sorry, mate, it was two teas. Ah, oh, brilliant. You all right? Yeah, why shouldn't I be? Uh, Brenda told me you'd had work. Right, well, you probably know more about it than me, then. Uh, what happened? What she told you? No, well, no, she didn't say much. She uh, oh, just harangued me about eggs. That floating thing? Yeah, she's always banging on about that. Eggs, yeah, eggs you can talk about. Anything else? Order a coffee, didn't you? Yeah, please. Right there. 160, thank you. Oh. Well? Well, what? What are you going to do about it? Nothing. I liked her. She wasn't interested. Back up her own tree. I don't know about that. Seriously, Dan, it's finished. Just leave it. You think about thinking? Mm. Well, probably not. There's someone all right there. You saw she but when they got it on. Wrong tree? She's definitely the right tree. What are you going to do? Going to go and get a nappy on and get me bow and arrow. Play Cupid. Right. Right. She's down. <sighs> Taking your pills? Oh. oh, no. I thought I'd try and make this decision without them. You know, with a clear head. Do you think that's a good idea? I don't know. I'm not sure they make any difference. Then maybe that's the tumour talking. You know, if I do have to have it cut out, maybe Bob could start dating that. Carry it round in a little... Come here. Come here. Look, I know this is a big decision. But the doctor did seem to think that surgery was the best option, Mum. It's stupid, I know, but... I had a nightmare about it last night. I was awake and... and I saw everything happening. Oh, you won't be awake. I know. But I can't stop making these horror stories in my head. Well, the doctor told you through the risks. She wouldn't have even suggested the operation if she didn't think it would work. Oh, she was very nice. But I feel as if I need to look into it a bit more. 
Before I make my decision. Oh, why didn't you say? You want painstaking, neatly plotted research, maybe even a chart or two? Mm. I know just the man. Oh, thank God it's you. I'm down here. What are you doing? Well, um, I thought if I lay on the hard floor, it might help my back a bit. But then I got down here and um, I realised I couldn't actually get back up. <laughs> no, it's not funny. I've been calling Paddy for ages. He was on the phone. One sec, I'll just put this stuff down. I thought you might be planking. You know that thing on the internet where people take pictures of themselves lying in weird places? Mm, careful. Oh, there's oh. a really good one of someone lying on a tiger. Here. Yeah, I've got oh. Mrs Bailey's gerbil under there, oh. have you? Ow, oh. ow, oh, stop, stop, stop! What's she doing to you? No, it's OK. I'm just planking. Right, that's it. I'm calling Dr Abbott. Mm, yep. That might be best. So, are you enjoying working in the kitchen? It's all right, I suppose. It's better than staying at home and getting nagged by Nicola. Oh, yes, yeah, she's certainly rather vocal about things that displease her, isn't she? Edna? Oh, coming from you, that's pretty cutting. Well, I'd say it to her face. <laughs> yeah, I bet you would. <laughs> He wasn't giving you any lip, was he, Edna? Just say the word and I'll hit and run. <laughs> There's no need for any of that, thank you. I think he's been rather misunderstood. I see a lot of his father in him. But the good parts, anyway. Oh, that's a relief. Tell me, how's the building coming along in Woodbine? You must be eager to get back to the old place. Yes, it'll be nice to be back home. <laughs> yes. As for me, I'd settle for a decent bus shelter if it offered independence. I didn't think that was your job. No. Look, yesterday, okay, I'm, I'm sorry. Like you said, I was weird. Yeah, whatever. I mean it, you know? You're going for a tough time, you know? You can do without me making it tougher. But just so I know, is this how it's going to be? You know, you're having to go one minute and then I'll meet you the next. I'm just trying to apologise. Yeah, well, don't bother. Just leave me alone. Oligodendroglioma. Oligodendroglioma. Glioma. Oligodendroglioma. Oligodendroglioma. Please tell me you haven't spent the last half an hour practising how to say what's wrong with my mum. No. Just thought it might be handy if one of us knew how to say it in case it came up in conversation. Which is unlikely, admittedly. Anyway, <clears throat> bit of background info. Not just the Wikipedia page. Um, case studies, survival rates. It all seems to agree that surgery is the best option. There's a lot of stuff in there that's negative, too. What's the other option? Waiting for her to die. I can't make her have this up, can I? Because what if it's the wrong choice and I'm the one that pushed her into it? Ow. Ow! Ow! Stop it! Oh, what did you tell me it was this bad? Oh! Because I told you we cannot afford to turn clients away. Well, we could have cancelled some of them today. Now, Vanessa's going to think I'm forcing you back to work with a bad back. <laughs> Don't you worry. Vanessa's perfectly aware that you cannot force me to do anything. Ow! You two have been slagging me off again. Mm. Ow! Ow! Oh. Oh. Hi. People trust the lives of animals to those two. Well, you're obviously not busy if you've got time to enjoy the suffering of others. Oh, God, you've got that look on your face. Should I be scared? Uh, no. Quite the opposite, actually. You get to do me a favour and... Well, I get to be very grateful. All right. Dad swamped at the garage. You couldn't give him a hand, could you? <sighs> what happened to helping out with the courier stuff? Oh, go on. For me. And cash? Am I not enough? And cash. Go on, then. Oh, you are a babe! Right, so as well as all the technical stuff, 
we made a big list of pros and cons about having the surgery. As you can see, there's more pros than cons, but if you can think of anything, that should go on either side. Hmm. Right, seeing Molly grow up. Well, that's a big one, obviously. Taking her first steps, saying her first words. Yeah, to be fair, they should probably be under the same heading, but... Are the grandchildren? Blimey, you're not pregnant again, are no, you? No, it's long term. <laughs> we realised when we were doing it that most of the pros are the names of people who are close to you. Sorry, it kills written Bob there. You can know that. But, you know, there's me and Nikhil and Moles. And it might sound selfish, but if the operation works, we don't lose you. Unless it goes wrong. Well, that's the big one. The only one on that side. Mm. So it's fear of the unknown versus the chance of living a life with everyone I care about. You know what I think. But it has to be your decision. Now she's going to need a change. Well, I'll have to get off in a minute. I've got the afternoon shift. Sure you'll be OK? Yeah, yeah. Just a lot to think about. Well, I could ring Bob, tell him you're sick. Grandma could have the afternoon off. No, 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 it's all right. I do my best thinking when I'm serving coffee. <laughs> Thanks for this. It's helpful. Good. Right, let's get you home, yeah? Come on. Don't mind me. Believe me, I won't. You must love working with her. Oh, it's a constant joy. Yes, you press the lever, coffee comes out. What? Wouldn't mind being served. And look at Edna, she's on the last legs. Miles away, sorry. Just ignore her. Some of us still know the meaning of the word patience. Penny for them. What for her thoughts? Rip off. Just daydreaming. I'll bring it over. So almost done. You've done a great job. You should be okay to move back in tomorrow, Edna. Oh, and I'd very much like to accept, um. Accept. Well, the back door lock has always been a little temperamental, and it seems to have got worse. I, I wondered, have you been letting it slam? Um, I'm not sure. Possibly. It's quite a struggle to turn the key. Well, listen, don't worry about it. I'll get it checked out. Out of girl, Edna. Don't let these cowboys get away with a shoddy job. <laughs> and, of course, you're welcome to stay with us until you're happy we've got it right. Thank you. You've been more than kind. I'm not crawling to her again. Bob, you work here. You've got a face of sooner or later. Look, neither of you are happy, hey? So I'm going to sort it out. All right, coffee when you've got a sec, Brenda. Bob will have one and all. Well, you'll be lucky at this rate. She may squeeze you in around about next week. Make it yourself. Brenda, um, you and all. Debbie said you needed some help or something. Oh, so she sent you. No, oh, forget it. All right, calm down. Uh, Dan's gone AWOL, so. Yeah. Some pigeons have used that marker for a toilet. Clear it off, will you? I know about cars, you know. We'll do a good job. You can help us with the service. Oh, and, uh, sort the other cars out while you're there, will you? Where are you going? Well, now you're here, I'm going on my break. Tell Debbie I'm up at the farm and, um, there's some wax in that cupboard over there. <laughs> you are joking! <laughs> Look, you got a problem? Complain to your boss. I told you. You're not though, are you? You're not all right. And if you'd have just let me come in with you, they're giving Doctor a bit of peace of my mind. Yeah, don't worry. I've got things sorted here. You'll go next door and rest up. Although, it is still OK for me to have tomorrow off, isn't it? What? Brilliant. Very supportive. Paddy? Uh, yes, of course it's still OK for you to have tomorrow off, to go to your godmother's funeral.
although she's going to struggle to get through all this by the end of the day. The doctor has said it's only a bulging disc, yeah? I just need a little bit of physio. You need painkillers. She also said I need to keep active, carry on as normal, stop it seizing up again. Right. Who's next? Uh, Mr Hillborn and Monty. Please. He's taking the mick. Who is? Who do you think? He's had me washing his poxy car up while he swans off with Myra. Oh, let me guess. Um, Kane? Jimmy? Not interested. The last time I looked, this was still... Yeah, it's a haulage firm. Not the HR department of your business. And Dan Scarpered when he saw Kane weren't there. I had half a mind to make off with a cash box. Oh, listen, he's just making a point. He thinks my banner in the garage. Well, far be it from me to stick off for your dad. You're not really showing much of an interest in it lately. Yeah, because I thought he could handle it. This is all very interesting, but when am I getting paid? Well, here. I might have a pound coin in my purse for you to go to the shops, get some sweets. You're not funny. Oh, Robbie, ignore her. Here. Oi! I'll pay you back. Listen, I'll make it up to you. I'll buy you a drink. Yeah, you will. Get him on his high horse. Well, I say hi. <laughs> Mum? All right. Keeping out of it. <sighs> Leave me alone. I'm not Bob. I know you're not Bob. Bob got the message. Now go away. I need to talk to you. Go away. No can do, I'm afraid. See, cos when I get something on my mind, I'm remarkably difficult to shift, like a stain. Ask Ali. What do you want? Glad you asked. You say I've got this theory for something you're not telling us. What makes you say that? Cos I know for a fact that you like Bob, and I know that you know he likes you too. When people like each other that much, they should be together. Life's too short for you not to be. I mean, you could die tomorrow. You could get hit by a satellite. You know, I read this article once. Apparently, hundreds fall every year. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'm just jealous. You got it all there waiting for you. The whole package, the job, family, bloke who's crazy about you. You can't let anything get in the way of that. Uh, anyway, look, I've said my piece. You're right. Really? Right. First time for everything. Maybe we should have more conversations like this. Anyway, maybe we should get back to Kane before he kills me. Think it over, yeah? I can replace that with a beer if you tell everyone it's a shandy. I told you to leave me alone. Yeah, listen, and I will. I've been caught up with all this stuff. And I've been taking it out on you. Yeah, I apologise for giving Chaz an hard time. Yeah, I know. Well, if it's cos of Dad... Listen, that's my problem, not yours. Clean slate? Yeah. No, not like Oi! Mopey chops! Kitchen! Hmm. I'm telling you, no matter what the doctor said, I'm putting you on light duties. What? It's great for you to be all caring now, but you're the reason why this happened. Let's play piggybacks. Let's giggle our little game. Wow, that was terrifying. Yeah, now you get to stay around even longer to help out. Well done. Tell me, Paddy, are you this jealous of all Rona's friends, or is it just a, a competitive vet thing? I'm not jealous. I, I mean, I know the last one made a pass at her, but I promise you, I don't swing that way. I'm not jealous. No, of course you're not. I've had loads of visitors today. I should throw a wobbler more off and... Well, I know it's scary, but it's the right thing to do. So you said. Well, that's not very fair. It's not just me. Doctor, she... Yeah, I know. I read the printout. I know it makes sense to have the operation, but... The thing is... The thing is, you see, is... I could die. Yeah, and I, I know it's stupid to think like that usually. I mean, people die every day, not just of tumours. I could get struck by lightning or 
hit by a satellite. That is not really that likely, though, is it? Yeah, it's more likely than you think. Yeah, but it's the same as there being complications. You say that, but after everything that's happened to me, I mean, it's probably a very low chance of me getting a brain tumour and look what happened there. Yeah, right, OK, OK. Right, I admit it, you've had some bad luck. But the difference between this and being hit by a bus... I said satellite, Right, satellite, then. The difference is that you can do something about this, Mum. You can get it treated. Yeah, but what if I don't? What if I just leave it to fit? That's what people usually do, isn't it? I mean, there's a chance that the tumour could grow so slowly that I'd die of old age first. Or it could kill you tomorrow. This is different, Mum. Maybe. But this way, I get to live my life. I get to keep what I've got for as long as possible. This way, I don't pick the day I die. I'm not. I'm sorry, love. I've made up my mind. I'm not going to have the operation. No, I know, Mummy. No. <laughs> Well, what a shock there was in last weekend's semi-final. Gareth is hoping to at least make an appearance this Sunday in the final of Dancing on Ice from Seven. Tonight, though, spilling the secrets off the ice. Torvald and Dean are on Piers Morgan's Life Stories later at night.